Welcome, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us for another of our monthly webinars. As I think you will learn from today's presentation, personal umbrella insurance can be an important asset protection tool. We at Bell Investment Advisors, within our comprehensive financial planning process, have come to really appreciate the value of this type of insurance for many of our clients. I am John Tregenza, Director of Client Development at Bell, and I'm very pleased to have with me today as our guest presenter, Mr. Daniel Glunt. Dan is Principal and CEO of Fort Point Insurance Services, a San Francisco-based firm he founded in 2003. With over a decade of insurance experience prior to starting Fort Point, at the Chubb Group and at Innsweb, an online insurance provider, Dan has put together a very successful, top-of-the-line property and casualty insurance brokerage. In fact, Fort Point and Bell Investment Advisors share many similar characteristics. Both are small, actively growing businesses owned by their principals who work hard to provide the best available service and independent advice, all tailored to the unique needs of our clients. Before we begin, I just want to remind everyone that we will reserve five minutes at the end of our presentation for questions and answers. We invite you to submit a question at any time during the webinar by clicking on the question box in the upper right-hand corner of your GoToWebinar screen. Or you can contact us with a question after the presentation, either by phone or by email. We promise to get back to you individually and answer all questions submitted. Should you have any technical difficulties during the webinar, you can try signing off and then reconnecting. You can click and send us a question about the problem, or you can call us for assistance at 800-700-0089. Now let's begin with an overview of today's webinar. Dan will be covering personal umbrella insurance from A to Z. He will be explaining for us what personal umbrella insurance is, what risks it covers, <coughs> what types of losses come under it, some unique features that are available, how much coverage is needed, how much it costs, and he'll end by offering some recommended steps to help you evaluate your needs for personal umbrella insurance. So Dan, I've often heard you say, you don't have to be a billionaire to be sued like one. What do you mean by this ominous sounding statement? Thank you, John, and thank you for having us. Um, put simply, a, a lawsuit against a, a family, particularly one of uh, the clients that, that Bell serves because they have this perception of affluence, a judgment against them can exceed an entire life savings. Every asset class is at risk except for some specified retirement accounts such as IRAs, 401ks, pension, and social security, but in California and in many states, you can lose your home or the equity within your home, personal assets. The fact of the matter is, last year uh, in 2010, there were 15 million lawsuits in the United States. That's one for every 12 adult Americans, $40 billion uh, worth, and then countless numbers of settlements that never even made it to court. 98, 99% of large liability claims never see the inside of a courtroom. So we're talking about some substantial numbers. Uh, understood. So I guess that takes us to personal umbrella insurance itself. Can you go over some of its characteristics for us? Sure. I, I think before we define umbrella, maybe we can break it into two categories. There's property coverage and there's liability or casualty. Property, put simply, is homeowners or possessions, tangible properties. So when we talk about liability coverage or umbrella, we're really talking about that, that liability protection, um, which is over and above first tier insurance, automobile policies, home policies, specific to the liability coverage. Um, typically, you have to list each property and car on a schedule. Um, there are rules that require that the first tier insurance meet certain attachment points. So the liability on your homeowner's policy needs to be sometimes around $300,000. Same for the cars, although every insurance carrier and every umbrella is a little bit uniquely different. But they range between 
$250,000 to $500,000 of primary or first tier coverage as the attachment point. So the umbrella really is a second tier policy. Once that first few hundred thousand dollars are exhausted, then the umbrella kicks in and it's um, a lower premium because most of liability claims are handled under the first tier policy. Really the umbrella policies are once you get into the hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars of coverage. Okay, then in general terms, what categories of things does umbrella insurance cover? Sure, it, it's really four key components. Bodily injury, and that's what we think of more often than not. Think of slip and falls or automobile accidents, specifically physical injury or death. Bodily injury can also in some jurisdictions be emotional injury. Property damage would be the damage or destruction of property of others and then their loss of use. You burn down your neighbor's house. You run into a series of parked cars. The third component is, is personal injury. Um, we think of wrongful eviction suits, malicious prosecution, libel, slander. Um, these types of cases really the defense coverage, which is the fourth component, oftentimes exceeds any indemnity coverage under personal injury. So the defense coverage is included if personal injury, bodily injury, or property damage to others are triggered. Okay. Uh, can you be a little more specific about exactly what kinds of losses personal umbrella insurance covers? Sure. The attached slide talks here about a number of different types of claims. Automobile accidents are at least 80 to 85 percent of all umbrella claims. And, and just some general facts about auto accidents. Every year, well last year, uh, six million automobile accidents, three million of which had some type of injury. 34,000 people died in automobile accidents uh, last year. Um, in 2011, 25 percent of all auto accidents will be due to a mobile device, which is kind of a new uh, category where we're seeing distracted drivers or mobile devices. Texting while driving over the next few years is going to exceed DUIs, which is a pretty significant number. So automobile accidents clearly has to be number one and really the principal reason for having an umbrella. Destruction or damage to the property of others. Animal attacks. Anybody who has a pet of any kind should have an umbrella policy or at least significant liability. Last year, five million dog bites. Most of the people who are bitten are children under the age of 13. Half of those are bitten in the face. So when we think about dog bites, it's a billion dollars a year and then some uh, of animal tax. It's frequency and it's severity. Swimming pools, diving board accidents, um, sometimes you have death or, worst case, uh, permanent disability. I would also add trampolines to that. In two, 2010, there were 100,000 injuries, also the majority of them for people under the age of 15 last year. Fire liability, you live in a condo or in a multi-unit apartment, you cause a fire causing destruction of property to others. Wrongful eviction, if you own rental property in Berkeley, Santa Monica, San Francisco especially, where they're very landlord unfriendly, it's an important coverage to have. Watercraft accidents, of course, make up a considerably smaller amount of the universe of motorized vehicles, but nevertheless, 3,000 injuries, 700 deaths in 2010. Water damage to the property of others, we see quite a bit of that in condominiums here in San Francisco and across the country. Um, a lot of people sit on their homeowners association board. We're seeing an uprise in not-for-profit directors and officers liability claims where for some umbrella policies uh, coverage is offered. Um, the one thing that's not on this slide that I would probably add is teenagers. Um, you have, they represent 5% of all of the drivers, yet twice as many accidents. And I think you have some real-life examples for us of the types of losses your insurers at Fort Point have seen, don't you? We do. Um, the first example here, again, uh, sort of masked to protect the innocent, but driving down a busy street, a uh, successful entrepreneur was hit in the crosswalk. I mean, it was 
significant claims, significant dollars. In a state like California, just entering the crosswalk, right or wrong, darting in front of a car, doesn't matter. The driver is always principally at fault. Second example, uh, at a pool party, someone diving into the shallow end. Um, there was a semi-permanent disability going on for quite a bit. That's, that's the most devastating that you can think of. And again, um, the third example, wrongful eviction. Um, we've seen that too many times in San Francisco and again in Berkeley where um, you have wrongful eviction, unlawful entry, malicious prosecution, especially in this environment right now. I know that in doing financial planning for some of our clients at Bell, we've talked to you about their insurance needs, and you've shown us that some companies in the marketplace, which are most of those that Fort Point represents, offer umbrella coverage features that other carriers do not. Can you illustrate what some of those special features are? Sure. Um, there are four companies in the marketplace that really um, attract the affluent or ultra-affluent or really the vast majority of the clients uh, that, that Bell serves. Companies like Chubb, Ace Private Risk Services, Fireman's Fund, and Chartists. These four companies, and I would add to some degree companies like Travelers Insurance, they offer a multitude of enhancements to their umbrella that in some ways are very unique just to these four or five insurers. For example, um, you can most umbrella policies are capped at five million dollars. There are a few carriers that can stretch it to ten, but it gets very expensive. These five companies regularly offer ten million dollar umbrellas and can go all the way up to a hundred million dollars. If you have domestic employees, employment practices liability for their wrongful termination or allegations against sexual harassment or uh, unfair work environments um, is covered as well. Most auto policies offer uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage, but this, these carriers also offer it on an excess basis. We only see about six or eight insurers offering uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage in million dollar increments above and beyond auto policies. This is one of the few areas of an umbrella policy that actually benefits the policyholder and their family. Most umbrella claims are things that you do to somebody else. As we mentioned earlier, if you sit on a homeowners association or a nonprofit board, some policies cover you for your homeowners association, but these carriers will also extend it over to any 501c3. Continuing on, um, your own personal attorney can follow the attorney that was provided by the insurance company. In some cases, for a domestic employee suit, we can hire a PR firm and spend up to $50,000 to manage image problems. If you're the uh, manager of a family trust, you can have coverage added for your errors and omissions or your actions or even failure to act as a manager of a family trust. One of the, the best features about the umbrella policies of, of some of the carriers that we mentioned, defense coverage are in excess of the liability limit, meaning that they could spend a million dollars to defend you on a $5 million umbrella and that doesn't erode the $5 million indemnity coverage. You always have those policy limits left over. In some cases, a GEICO umbrella, for example, the defense coverage erodes the limit of liability. Unlawful entry, wrongful eviction, libel, slander. We add this because sometimes these need to be added by endorsement to umbrella policies. Some of the umbrella policies with Chubb and Chartist, Fireman's Fund, and ACE these carriers, it's automatic, but others need to be manuscripted. When you have children that are 21 or 25 or parents moving back into the household, that complicates things because most umbrella policies have limitations with respect to age or where people reside. And so, it, again, it's, it's important to check with your agent. Last point where they're different, uh, coverage for trusts, family trusts, LLCs, S-Corps, C-Corps, other uh, legal entities, some carriers just are uncomfortable uh, listing those on a policy, and especially when it comes to umbrella coverage, these carriers feel pretty comfortable with that. So how do you determine how much coverage is needed? Well, one of the things we love about working with Bell and, and your financial planning process that, that you've built, 
you don't marry the net worth with the umbrella limit. You recognize that you can be sued for anything. And really, it's having that conversation, um, looking at risk factors, if you will. We recommend that the professional advisor as an insurance agent look at risk factors as a measurement of probability. Um, in fact, on the slide that, that follows, if you have four or more of these risk factors, you need at least a $5 million umbrella. And again, that's available from anybody. If you have five or more risk factors, you should really consider a $10 million umbrella or higher. And here they are. Folks who are in the public eye or perceived in the public eye, the, can someone Google you and find out a lot about you? Do you own rental property, pets? You know, if you're driving a $100,000 car, it's very different if you rear-end somebody compared to, say, a, a, smart, a smart car, a Toyota Corolla. If you travel internationally, some umbrella policies don't offer coverage beyond the United States or Canada. Again, having a lot of children, um, transporting sports teams, etc., you're running a risk where you have greater responsibility. Owning firearms, boats, nonprofit boards, a vacation home and pool, domestic employees. Again, all of these things attribute to having a higher measurement of risk. Therefore, you should consider a, a larger umbrella. Okay, now to perhaps the most important question. How much does this insurance cost? Is it expensive? It's very inexpensive. In fact, we always advocate to clients, if you increase your home deductible, you save a few hundred dollars, you take that few hundred dollars that you've saved and increase your umbrella. It's that important and it's that inexpensive. So it's simply, what's the dollar limit of coverage? You can buy policies 1, 2, 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 5 million, and 10 million uh, and up. Uh, how many homes do you own? And that's fairly inexpensive for the number of properties, but it does get expensive for how many cars or boats that you have. The premium for a $5 million umbrella, one home and one car, between $270 and $610 a year. For a $10 million umbrella with two homes, a rental property, three cars, $1,250 to $1,850 a year. Again, for the amount of coverage, it's not that expensive. So to wrap things up, Dan, if one wants to look into personal umbrella insurance further, what steps do you suggest that they take? Well, you know, we have the good fortune of having clients who have that financial pl planning meeting with you and your team, but those folks who don't have that luxury work with your independent agent or your current insurance agent and ask for an annual review. Um, we see many, many clients having different carriers and different relationships. We advise against that. It's always a good idea to review all of the schedule of properties, the cars, the boats, the homes, make sure that they're all listed on the umbrella. The third point, review the first tier or primary limits of coverage to make sure that you meet the unique and specified attachment points for that umbrella policy. If you need some unique features, like you sit on a nonprofit board, travel internationally, have domestic employees, etc., talk to your agent about unique features. If you have domestic employees, again, make sure you find out how they're covered, both for liability on the umbrella, but maybe even domestic employee workers' compensation. If you have children who've moved back home, or maybe even parents who are living with you, find out how they are covered as well. The last point, I haven't met too many folks who have the appropriate amount of coverage, so I would say increase your liability limit. It may be too low, and the incremental cost is well worth the money. That's very helpful, Dan. Some excellent advice. And I want to thank you so much for your clear, instructive introduction to this type of insurance. And thanks for showing us how personal umbrella insurance really can be an asset protection tool. Now I want to remind everyone that all of our webinars are recorded and are made available for replay about a week after they first air. To watch and listen to these past webinars, just visit our website, www.bellinvest.com, and click on the tab Resource Center. Let me also mention that next month's webinar will take place on Wednesday, August 24th at 2 p.m. This will be our regular quarterly clients only webinar in which we offer our clients the latest Bell Investment Committee update. Now let's turn to some questions uh, that have come in during our, our webinar. Um, here's one. 
Let's try this one out. I'd always thought that if I had a loss to my house, art, jewelry, etc., and it turns out that I didn't have enough insurance, my umbrella would make up the difference. It doesn't sound, however, like that's the case. Can you please clarify? That's absolutely correct. It, the umbrella does not cover um, home insurance inefficiencies or inefficiencies in your property coverage. There are some other protections that are in place for that, but the umbrella, again, is just specific to bodily injury, personal injury, property damage to others that you're responsible for, or the defense costs uh, attributed to, to one of those events. Okay, uh, here's another one. Most homeowner associations are required to provide DNO insurance to cover the directors. Should the individual board member have additional umbrella insurance? That's a great question. So yes, all 501c3s and HOAs in California need to have a million dollars worth of directors and officers liability policy. So the odds are if you are a, uh, a board member of your HOA, you can confirm that that coverage is already in place. Most homeowner policies cover you for these specific coverages, again, bodily injury, personal injury, property damage, in excess of the underlying insurance. Where the personal umbrella policy doesn't cover uh, as a traditional DNO would be the wrongful termination of HOA employees, the financial mismanagement or allegations of mismanagement. And so that's a very specific and great question. I would always put that back to each person's individual insurance agent. There are some, so the short answer is there are some protections, um, but it's good to uh, always review that with your agent. Great, thank you. I think we have time for one more. Uh, here's one. Uh, can you please explain again how excess uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage works? It's easy to add it. Is it easy to add it to my current umbrella? And about how much does it cost? It's fairly inexpensive. Um, the cost per million of coverage is less than $100 in general. Um, there are only a handful of insurance companies that offer it. To we, that we know of, there's just six. The companies that I mentioned before, Chubb, ACE, Fireman's Fund, Chartus. Um, we do see it on occasion for some legacy State Farm customers, but really not any new customers. And we do see it from time to time with farmers insurance as well. It covers your pain and suffering. It covers lost wages. Um, it covers um, wage continuation, medical costs that are in excess of what your health or disability coverage doesn't provide. You know, if you need to redo your house for a handicap ramp and bathrooms, et cetera, the monies can go to that. So it really it replaces the, the party who hit you that didn't have any insurance or not enough insurance with your own. And with 80% of all Californians having $100,000 all the way down to no coverage at all, it's money well spent. Um, I, I think we have a few more minutes, actually. So let me let's just try and squeeze in one more question. Sure. Okay, I'll put you... I'll put you through your 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 your, your efforts here. Uh, let's see. What are the most common types of umbrella claims that you see? Are there one or two risk factors which drive the largest claims? Well, you know, for us, aside from automobile, which we've chatted about, again, I have to say, not to pick on teenagers, but it's just when you have teenagers, think of not only automobile accidents, but using the family golf cart having a party at home where alcohol is served, um, getting into things because of inexperience, texting while driving. Sometimes we think of teenagers, but I would add that everybody does it. And again, it's going to be the leading, it's going to pass DUIs. And I do think we're going to see criminal, um, beyond civil issues with texting while driving. It is just as irresponsible as uh, DUIs. And I'll, I'll get off my soapbox there, but... <laughs> Texting while driving is something that is incredibly dangerous, more dangerous than DUIs. And again, um, 6,000 people last year died because of texting while driving or distracted drivers. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm going to actually try to squeeze one more in here. We're getting a <laughs> lot of questions coming in. Uh, it is, if I have property in California and Pennsylvania, how does that work? Should I purchase insurance in both states? Great question. So. Um, 
each state is regulated by their own Department of Insurance. Um, some carriers can easily accommodate that. So if you have a home in Pennsylvania, typically you need to have a, a Pennsylvania homeowner's policy and a California homeowner policy, but then both of those properties can be added to an umbrella policy. If you just own vacant land or you own it with somebody else and there's property insurance elsewhere, most California home renter or condo policies will allow you to extend what's called primary liability and then add it to an umbrella policy in another state. In fact, you should be able to do that for all 50 states plus the District of Columbia. Well, thank you, Dan. I'm afraid that now we have run out of time. Uh, and if we do have any other questions that come in, I want everyone to know that we will be uh, following up with you and answering them uh, whenever they arrive. So don't hesitate to send us something. Also, we ask you to please take a couple of minutes to fill out the survey you will be receiving following today's webinar. Your comments, reactions, and suggestions are very valuable and important to us, and we look forward to receiving them. And just a reminder that copies of the slides used in today's presentation are available from us on request. So don't hesitate to send us an email or give us a call. We'd be happy to send you a copy of the slides. So to end, thank you all for participating today, and we look forward to having everyone join us again very soon.